might be a little quieter today, uh, so bear with me. If you need me to be a little louder, I might be able to move my mic a little closer to my mouth there. Um, <clears throat> welcome to worship on this uh, beautiful uh, winter morning our Lord has given us today. A couple announcements before we get started. First of all, you, most of you, I think, have probably heard of uh, my update. <clears throat> the surgery went well. I got the right side of my thyroid out. Unfortunately, we have to wait until tomorrow to find out whether it is benign or cancerous. Um, <clears throat> if it is cancerous, um, they have to go back in the incision they already made, take out my left side, and then I drink my little radiation drink to kill all the thyroid cells, wherever they might be in my body, and I should be good to go from then on. So the prognosis for thyroid cancer is very good, which is reassuring, uh, but we still are praying and I can be done already. So, um, <clears throat> we will, if I can be so bold, we'll include myself in the prayers again today. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Flowers today are from uh, uh, Bio Seamer's funeral and Lynn Numbson's funeral. We have a free uh, Bible class today. My voice is a little sore, so you might have picked that one. It will be canceled today. So just enjoy the fellowship time back there after the service. Um, <clears throat> Advent's coming, our Christmas decorating uh, will be coming on the 30th. Earlier that week we'll have our Thanksgiving service on the 26th, there's a note in there as well. Midweek Bible class continues this week, <clears throat> assuming I don't have another operation, um, but I'll let you all know that as well. And uh, Ladies Aid meets on a different time in December, so just keep that uh, in your mind there. Also, there was an announcement that All Saints Choir will be practicing today after the service. So uh, come on up and, uh, and uh, join in singing uh, today after the service to sing next week. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, in our prayers today, um, actually a prayer of Thanksgiving, Jerry Chose's numbers are looking better for blood work, so we praise God for that. Um, and we also want to uh, include those who are listed there, including the families of Violet and Violet Seniors and Lynn Nums and so Are there any other announcements or prayer requests this morning that you have? Okay, well, I invite you to rise and greet one another with peace, brother. <laughs>
for your emails, please rest. Page 184. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Love in the Lord. Let us strive here with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ who grant us forgiveness. And our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Amen. And take a moment for personal reflection.
To one, he gave five talents. To another, two. To another, one. To each, according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also, he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also who had the two talents came forward saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master answered, You wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown, and gather where I have scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to him who has the ten talent. For to everyone who has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away, and cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and a gnashing of teeth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. As we begin, we join in confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, who made her of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance of the Father, by whom all things were made, for us.
readings, which were about the end times, um, calling us to be watchful. Uh, the Lord could come, the Lord call us home at any time. Something I thought about that recently, actually. But it's also teaching our readings <clears throat> that we don't have to be afraid of that day. Paul says, encourage one another with these words. The day of the Lord, for those in the Lord, the day of joy, to do with Christ to rest from the sin and the sadness that is in this broken world. You're not need to be afraid. But that's another sermon. For this one, I want to go back in time about 2,000 years. After the resurrection of Jesus, the apostles began, began preaching and traveling around the world. They set up churches all over the known world with the help of faithful Christians everywhere. The Bible was made as the writings of the apostles and the gospels were passed around from church to church and read aloud in the religious services. So today, we will do as our brothers and sisters did 2,000 years ago. We will hear a letter written uh, from Paul to a church leader, Titus, that was shared with the churches uh, before the computers, before the printing presses. That's what we're going to do right now. We'll read a letter aloud from the Bible. So sit back, relax, and allow yourself to get caught up in the history of the church, your church. <laughs> Nonetheless, Paul's letter to Titus. <laughs> Paul, a servant of God and apostle of Jesus Christ, for the sake of the faith of God's elect and their knowledge of the truth, which accords with godliness, and hope of eternal life, which God who never lies promised before the ages began, that the proper time manifested in his word throughout the preaching with which I have been entrusted by the command of uh, God our Savior. To Titus, my true child in the common faith, grace and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior. This is why I left you in Crete, so that you might put what remained into order and appoint elders in every town as I direct if anyone is above reproach, the husband of one wife, and his children are believers and not open to the charge of debauchery or insubordination. For an overseer, as God's steward, must be above reproach. He must not be arrogant, or quick tempered, or a drunkard, or vile, or greedy for gain, or hospitable, a lover of good, self control, upright, holy, and disciplined. He must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught. So that he may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine and also rebuke those who contradict it. <clears throat> For there are many who are insubordinate, empty talkers and deceivers, especially those of the sacred city department. They must be silenced, since they are upsetting the whole families by teaching for shameful gain what they ought not to teach. One of the Cretans, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, lazy gluttons. This testimony is true, therefore rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in faith, not devoting themselves to Jewish myths and the commands of the people who turn away from the truth. To the pure, all things are pure. But to the defiled and unbeliever, nothing is pure. But both their minds and their consciences are defiled. They profess to know God, but they deny Him by their works. They are detestable, disobedient, unfit for the good work. But as for you, teach what accords with sound doctrine. Older men are to be sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith and love and in steadfastness. Older women, likewise, are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good, and so train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind and submissive to their own husbands, that the Word of God may not be reviled. Likewise, urge the younger men to be self-controlled. Show yourselves in all respects to be a model of good works. And your teaching show integrity, dignity, and sound speech that cannot be condemned, 
so that an opponent may be put to shame, having nothing evil to say about us. Bond servants are to be submissive to their own masters and <coughs> They are to be well pleasing, not argumentative, not filtering, but showing all good faith, so that in everything they may adore the doctrine of God our Savior. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing the salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, who are zealous for good works. Declare these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority, but no one disregard it. Remind them to be submissive to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarrel, to be gentle, and to show perfect courtesy toward all people. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy, by the washing of regeneration, renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by His grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The saying is trustworthy. I want you to insist on these things, so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. These things are excellent and profitable for people. But avoid foolish controversies, genealogies, dissensions, and quarrels about the law, for they are unprofitable and worthless. As for a person who serves up division, after warning him once and then twice, I have nothing more to do with him. Knowing that such a person is warped and sinful, he is self condemned. Let our people learn to devote themselves to good works, so as to help cases of urgent need and not be unfruitful. All who are with me send greetings to you. Greet those who love us in faith and grace be with you all. Amen. <coughs> Paul's letter to Titus, the young church leader. A letter full of salvation by grace through faith, one on the cross of Christ, the one who laid his life down. He urges him, his leader, and all those who heard this letter to speak the truth. Urges us to walk in goodness, not hatred, all the while reminding us that it doesn't earn us salvation. That's the one for us on the cross, but it is a fruit of that salvation that we can give. Not a bad sermon at all. I don't know. I don't know. So please. <clears throat> Let's now continue with the singing of our offertory on page 193. <laughs>
church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, our Father, you created us male and female and you gave the gift of marriage as though a reflection of your love for your church and the foundation of society on earth. We pray for all the marriages of our congregation, Lord. Work in those relationships so that husband and wife love and honor each other. Men who heal any marriages under the attack of the evil one. Strengthen their commitment and enrich their lives with the gift of each other. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, you have also given us order, peace, and fellowship with our brothers and sisters in the faith. Thank you for the blessing of our synod and guide both its leaders and its various organizations so that they honor and follow you above all else. Direct the affairs of our church body and our local congregation alike. Keep us faithful to the end, Lord, even as through your Holy Spirit you have preserved and strengthened us to this day. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord Jesus, you warned your disciples that as the end drew near, there would be signs in heaven and on earth. That you told them not to be afraid. Preserve, preserve us, faithful Lord, from all evils of body and soul. Protect us from natural disasters, plagues, and pestilence. Enable us through it all to be faithful and mindful of the salvation you have given us. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Protect, comfort, and heal those in distress. We especially remember Jerry with Thanksgiving, Rob, myself, Ariana, and all those who made in our hearts to this time. Sustain them in sickness, and if it be your will, restore them to health, and comfort us with certain promise that one day we will hear your blessed words. Well done, good, and faithful servant. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Blessed are you, O Lord, for the gift of eternal life and for all who rest in their graves in the hope of the resurrection. Comfort those who mourn with this promise, proven in your empty tomb. We especially remember the families of Lynn and Violet. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Blessed are you, Father, for your unchanging love toward us in Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Our service continues with the service of the sacrament on page 194. And the Lord be with you.
poured out for you the forgiveness of sins. You see what's offered to drink of it, and remember this to me. And the peace of the Lord be with you all.
ask uh, from the doctors tomorrow, and we'll get on the clear team. Let you guys know uh, if you uh, if your email is on the email list and you want it to be, let me know. Um, and if you'd like your phone number on the prayer chain call list, let me know too. We can get that uh, organized, especially with the new year coming up. Hi, Amanda. All right. You gonna help us your app this morning? Yeah. Once uh, we do have some uh, treats, let's join the commentary prayer. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. 